Top 10 heroes for the month of November 2019. I just want to thank everyone that liked my last video that was top 10. It's always my most liked video. I have a ton of fun making it. And we're going to start off this list right here with Phoenix. And this is this this top 10 list is in no particular order. And I just want to say that some of these characters, I want to also mention their corresponding tanks, and that's why they're very good. Now, Phoenix, I just want to say she's probably the second best character in the game, second only to Ultron. You should know this by now. Ultron's amazing. But Phoenix is also especially awesome because she's paired up with her tank, Colossus. Them two together almost plug and play, gonna make any team better by using those two. Now, she is the queen of the arena, hands down. Uh, changed the arena nine day. The X-Men team is on top of the world as far as war, one of the, probably the best current offensive war team. Now, she's a legendary character, villain mystic controller requirement to get her unlocked, and she's the only six star unlock. Uh, kind of makes her a hassle to get. Not a fan of the way that uh, she's unlocked. Her summon ability kind of makes her a balanced character. And the reason why I'm a fan of that is because, uh, yes, she's awesome, but not so much in raids. Because when she dies, she summons the Dark Phoenix, and that's where her kit gets just absolutely crazy huge amounts of damage. Uh, vitality Drain inside of Fear the Darkness. This will do 100,000 AoE, amazing. Her basic attack will clear massive amounts of uh, positive effects from another team, but she doesn't revive in a raid. I mean, she actually dies because she's a summon, like a minion. And so you have to spend money to refresh her. Uh, plus her kit's a hard counter to the bounty hunters in Magneto, and uh, this ability right here is amazing. Nothing bad I can say about her, and I actually, for me, I kind of like that she's not good in raids. I think she's effective in raids, but you have to spend the cores to refresh her. I just like that mechanic, and uh, she's easily on the top 10 list, and I uh, like her so much that I went and put T4s on three out of her four abilities. Uh, I do want to say that I'm playing on Bluestacks on my computer, and I'm getting 60 frames per sec. Uh, there's a link down in the description. It does help support this channel if you want to play on your PC. Next on the list is Nick Fury, and Nick Fury, of course, pairs with uh, Shield Security. The two of them together are crazy, and Shield, for the longest time, was the like the best, well-rounded team in the game, and you know, good in raids, good in the arena, good in so many different things. Uh, good now uh, because of Coulson on defense, probably the best uh, defensive team aside from like Ultron or BKT. Uh, they're they're really good. And I, if I didn't mention Nick Fury and Shield Security, something would be wrong. Also, Nick Fury is very effective uh, for going into Fear to Darkness. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, Minerva here in a minute. Next on the list is Captain Marvel. Now. I want to say she's probably the third best character in the game. She's plug and play. She goes quickly. She does a lot of damage. At pound per pound, uh, one versus one, she is uh, scary. And she's very good. I mean, I've seen some of these seven star with like six red stars inside of Alliance Wars on defense, and she could clear out Wakandans, like a 200k Wakanda team. Not a problem. Ms. Marvel can, Captain Marvel can help it. She heals herself. And you can see how much I like her is I've gone and I put three out of the four uh, on those orange mats. I, I mean, I, that's how much I think she's great. And uh, can't say enough about her plug and play character. And it mostly has to do with her going into the binary mode and going early and almost nuking one character very early, especially when paired up with Loki. But uh, the ma effectively, the matches are often four versus fives, and that is a good thing. Next, we have to talk about Vision, and Vision is on this list because I like his kit. And I just want to reinforce that this is like one of my favorite characters in the game uh, for a long time. And the reason why I like Vision is that he works well with tech teams. You can put him on a tech team because he gives everybody on spawn defense up. You could also pair him up with the Scarlet Witch. There's some uh, mild synergy with him and Scarlet Witch. More importantly, he he pairs the best on top of uh, a power armor team. He has this a crazy ability right here that clears positive effects. He has this dive bomb ability block, which if you can land on Ultron, it effectively neuters the best character in the game. This is a good kit, and then recently his basic attack was reworked. Only good things to say about 
uh, Vision. I prefer Vision's kit and just the way that it works and how he works with so many different teams. Although he'd be low on my list. If I'm being frank, he's he's not in the top three or the top four or even the top five. Ultron, best character in the game. And uh, the reason why he's the best character in the game is that you can go into Blitz 8.3 and you can take Ultron and any four characters and you can win. You can put him on defense in war with any four characters he can win. He is amazing. And basically, he's unstoppable uh, when these minions get out. Now, the other reason why I like this kit is because... It does work well in raids, but if he runs out of energy and this ability goes to zero and this ability here goes to zero, he's not good. He has to get the minions out. If you can AOE and clear the minions and stop him from getting positive status effects, uh, he's beatable. So there's a ton of ways of countering him, but yet he is that powerful and he's the ultimate chase currently in the game in Fear the Darkness. Can't say enough things. Magneto! Magneto is another legendary character, and again, I want to mention his tank, Juggernaut. Them two together is quite amazing. Uh, he's always going to be relevant right here because of this ability. He goes very first, especially when he's paired up with other uh, Brotherhood. He's going to go very early, and he's going to put blind on the entire team, and then he pulls the whole team together, uh, the opponents together, so that uh, splash damage is a lot more effective, especially with Pyro. Uh, he can also put Disrupted, uh, which I often do uh, inside of the arena. I'll put Disrupted on uh, Ultron so that when Phoenix goes and puts everybody in stealth, he doesn't. And then I can Ability Bot him with Vision. It's, it's just a good kit. And then right here, you can chain. And then, of course, Juggernaut and him together uh, are, are just a force to be reckoned with. I can't say enough good things about uh, Magneto. Now, Star-Lord. Star-Lord is on this list because of his effectiveness in a couple different places, but mostly in Fear the Darkness. Putting him beside Minerva and feeding energy to her is an amazing thing. Being able to put Blind on the team is an amazing thing. Plus, he's the leader of the Guardians. Uh, Rocket and Groot with Starlord were just amazing. Those three right there with themselves, uh, especially with Rocket. You're going to have high burst damage from Rocket, and you're going to have high burst damage from Starlord. And it's, it's just a big deal. And there's a team called BKT, Best Cree Team, which is kind of a silly thing, but basically it's a team composition of Starlord, Rocket, Groot, along with Minerva and Thanos, which is uh, one of the best. Uh, teams to get through Ultima 6, without a doubt. I mean, you can just pretty much put that on autoplay. And I feel that Star-Lord is probably uh, the first legendary I would go after if I was starting the game fresh. I think I would uh, hang on to Defenders, and then I would start my focus on getting uh, Star-Lord, because the, the Guardians team is very good. And a uh, huge fan of star -Lib, and I love that hip action right there. Next on the list is Minerva. Okay. Minerva basically allows you to unlock Ultron. And I just want to see she's probably in the top four best characters. You know, if I'm going to say uh, best three is, you know, Ultron, Captain Marvel, uh, Phoenix, and then Minerva's in there somewhere. Uh, she is amazing in the raid, and she is uh, what allows you to unlock Ultron. Uh, she does all the damage, and then it has to do with uh, percent health damage right here. You can just feed energy into her with Starlord. She has sustain, and then she does uh, puts out bleed. And the best thing I like about Minerva is that she's pretty much viable at any star level and without any putting any T4s. Uh, currently, not easy to get. Uh, even though she's not a legendary character, pretty much the only place to get her is in the premium orb. So not farmable, not available, and that is unfortunate because uh, she is the key uh, to get Ultron. And I am asked, well, how do I unlock Ultron without Minerva? And I say Phoenix. Well, I say, well, without Phoenix or Minerva, I'm just like, well, it's just going to take a long time. Pretty much any five characters can go into Fear to Darkness. It's just going to take months. And uh, Minerva really speeds that process up, and it's, it's solely about... Uh, protecting and fuel energy to Minerva. Next on the list is Invisible Woman. Now, Invisible Woman, I'm not sold on. And she was uh, my ninth person to put on this list. And uh, I just want to, but she's good. And maybe I'm undervaluing her. Maybe next month's list, I will be ranting and raving about Invisible Woman. Uh, but I've been slow to the, the Fantastic Four party. First things first, Fantastic Four is uh, next to Brotherhood and X-Men best offensive war team with Namor. Amazing. 
But what I'm getting use out of her is inside of the raids, in U7 in particular. Uh, she puts up Barrier, which helps out the whole team. She can clear negative status effects. She can put Stealth on everybody but the highest health ally, which is very good for sustain. Her kit is very good, offensive down. And so uh, I'm running into Ultima 7, and uh, basically that's about keeping Ultron and Minerva alive, and Invisible Woman is very good at doing that. So to be continued, I'm currently gearing her up, and I will report back a month from now on whether I think she's as good as everybody's telling me, but I had to put her on the list for sure. And then lastly on this list is Nobu, and that is because Nobu is trash. He's my icon in the game, and he needs a rework, and I want him to make the list. And my problem with Nobu is that he is a requirement because he's a villain mystic controller. He's a requirement for the six-star unlock on Phoenix. And there was quite a big of uproar when uh, Nick Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D. came out where we were required to get Kree. And at the time, Kree was a bad, bad team. And uh, a lot of people were not happy with that. And so they did rework the Kree to make them viable in some sort of game modes. And they made a commitment to the community to not ever uh, require us to use bad characters to unlock a legendary character. You know, objectively, Hand Assassin is worse, but I just like to pick on Nobu. And I like to say Nobu's trash. He was actually a fairly good character when the game came out. Uh, but mostly had to do with his uh, Secret of Death ability here was bugged uh, because he would revive other characters that were summons, like his summons, they would die off, and he would revive them at as full characters instead of the summons, and so that made him a much better character than he actually was. All right, well, what do you think about my list? Uh, there's lots of other characters that I like a lot, but that's my list for this month. Uh, let me know in the comment section what you think about it, and as always, thanks for watching, and keep on gaming.